Bundy set free and no retrial possible. Last week, U.S. District Court Judge Gloria Navarro dismissed the case against the Nevada rancher Clive and Bundy, quote, without prejudice, unquote. Now, that quote meant that there was a possibility that the prosecution could still seek to retry Bundy, Bundy and this week the judge held a hearing in response to the prosecution's request that, yes, it was very clear they were going to want to do this all over again. They claimed that, hey, man, the stuff that uh, was included, dude, are bad. Psych your mind. Give us a do-over. We promise we won't be bad this time. We'll be cool. And the judge said, hells no. The judge threw the case out, this time with prejudice. And that means that there is no chance the prosecution can retry Bundy. So Cliven Bundy, by the way, he's already been in jail for more than 700 days. He calls himself a political prisoner. And, hey, I'm, I'm inclined to believe this whole thing, from my perspective, is is mostly about the, the BLM wanted... Wanting to claim land that that wasn't its, and Clive and Bundy was like, "Dude, you can't have my land." They're like, "Oh well, let's try to come up with some sort of uh, legal uh, loophole thingy here that we can go ahead and throw this guy in jail, so we can we so we can take his money." So this is from I'm going to read a brief excerpt here from AZ Central, and their headline was "Clive and Bundy Walks Free as Federal Judge Dismisses Bundy Ranch Standoff Case." Nevada rancher Cliven Bundy walked free from the federal courthouse Monday for the first time since his arrest two years ago on charges that he led in an armed rebellion against the government in 2014. Boy, that's... I enjoyed that sentence way too much. I apologize. I definitely enjoyed that sentence. I'm not calling for an armed rebellion. I'm just saying there's a part of me that's like, oh, that's a nice sentence. But moving on. So Bundy 71 was greeted by cheers from a crush of supporters who jammed her courtroom and greeted him along alongside with HUDs, placards, cards, tears, and cried of, and cries of liberty and freedom while they toted, of course, the Constitution and, and begged for, you know, if we could just get it right this time, we can get the tyranny right this time. We can have our freedom and liberty, even though we're still going to have people in charge of us punishing us for things that uh, we did that didn't actually hurt uh, anyone else. So Bundy said... I'm not used to being free. I have been a political person. Well, there you go. I have been a political prisoner for more than 700 days. And the U.S. District Court Judge Navarro said federal prosecutors acted recklessly. I'd say more than recklessly. And engaged in a deliberate attempt to mislead and distort the truth. All right, that's enough of that. Let's go to the next headline. And the next headline is U.S. responds to Pakistan by suspending security assistance. So the separating of the U.S. from Pakistan is continuing at rocket speed. So the first thing that happened was Donald Trump said, dude, Pakistan. I mean, he he basically, you know, he did it through his tweet. He's he's. You know, I, I wrote a song some time ago that I never really fully developed. Uh, well, that's a long story, but it's called the Tweet Tweet Song. This was written back in like 2010, 11, something like that. But one of the lines was, the president no longer speaks. His policies are in his tweeting. Yes, I predicted Donald Trump. I am the amazing Kreskin. Boom. So... Uh, he tweeted to Pakistan that, hey, dude, you ain't cooperating. Why are we giving you money, man? We ain't going to give you money. So sure enough, they said no more money, no foreign aid for Pakistan. And Pakistan was like, dude, okay, I'll tell you what. We're going to call someone else up, man. We're going to call China. Yeah, yeah, China, 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 China all the time. And so they called China, and now they're like, yeah, China. China will take care of us. So... What did the uh, Trump administration do? They said, okay, 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 I tell you what. I tell you what we're going to do. No more security assistance. We're suspending that. Yeah, so suspending, though, is a key because they didn't say end. They said suspend. So they're still thinking maybe Pakistan will get the message and 
come in line with uh, what it is that we want to do. Now, from my perspective, uh, anytime the U.S. decides not to spend money is cool. But immediately, I think that Trump is looking for ways. I know that they were talking about they, they cut the U.N. spending. And so they're looking, well, how can we spend the U.N. spending? Hey, how about you don't? How about you just don't spend as much this year? That'd be great. Left Less theft dollars used to spend for stuff I don't want it spent on. That'd be great. So we'll go to the next story. And ready? Merkel. Merkel fails to form coalition. And time is running out. So this is from... Euronews.com, and their headline is Germany's Merkel Battles for Political Survival in Last-Ditch Talks with SPD. So I'm, I'm reading from them. Angela Merkel, the chancellor for the past 12 years, has so far failed to convince other parties to form an alliance and has struggled to maintain her grip on power. However, she says she's optimistic. I am going into these talks with optimism. Indeed, it's clear that in these few days... Why am I doing a Russian accent? It's clear that in these few days we have a huge amount of work with ahead of us, but we're willing to take on this work and achieve a good outcome, she says. Her CDU and its sister party, the CSU, are currently courting the SPD at Berlin headquarters. And all of it kind of reads like VD, but that's another story. It has proven a reluctant ally. After years of being the minority partner, the center-left Social Democrats suffered their worst results since World War II in September's ballot, gaining just 20% of the vote. So you think about that. Angela Merkel is turning to a party that it is very clear the Germans are like, N -n -n. Eh, not so much. But they're gonna, she's going to turn to them to try to hold on to power. Hey, that's a, that's a good confidence booster. That's a good way to win the German people over. Of course, they just recently passed uh, laws. Well, I don't know if they fully passed them or if they're about to pass them. But laws that are restricting, well, no, it's actually going to go after the social media giants themselves and say, if you don't take this fake news article off within a certain period of time, I think it's 24 hours, then you could get fined up to, I don't know, $5 million or some, some ridiculous figure like that. So they're, they're clamping down on the Germans while they're trying to hold on to power. Good move. Good Good, good move. At this point, I don't even know if she cares. And uh, just, could, just to continue here, but it could now be changing its tune. At the start of the round of talks, General Secretary Lars Klingbeil said, new times need a new style of politics, and said, a serious, constructive, and open discussion had taken place. In other words, desperation has set, set in. I'll just read the last paragraph here. If no deal is struck... A new election could be on the horizon, while a less stable minority government with the Greens or the Liberals could be on the cards. Talks with the two parties had previously failed to result in a coalition government. Merkel herself has also indicated... Oh, wow, they have a typo. Well, so do I. I'm not going to bust their, their chops over that. Merkel herself had also indicated, indicated that she would prefer a fresh election. Let's get to the next uh, headline here. FCC publishes net neutrality order. So, netpocalypse is still unfolding and the ramifications of peeling away one set of regs that may theoretically have kept another set of regs at bay are still unfolding. And at long last, the FCC order repealing net neutrality has been published with mega platforms like... Netflix and Google lining up to sue the federal government for ending regulations. Now, to be, and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong, uh, it's not at all clear to me what legal, and I'm putting that in quotes, grounds, these companies have to sue the federal government to continue to allegedly force companies to provide services and price those services in a certain way. But apparently, 
Hey, that's what we do now, apparently, for any and all laws, regulations, taxes, whatever it is that some entity doesn't like, you sue to, to stop it, apparently. So, mind you, none of these folks are significantly devoting their attention to the root of the problem, state and local regulations that give state protections to ISPs, enabling them to have monopolies that give them the power to do things. Net neutrality is designed them to design to stop them from doing, allegedly, because there's some debate about uh, just how effective net neutrality is. This whole, oh well, how, how effective it is. This whole issue is just a cluster, you know what. I don't know where to come out on this. It's like no matter which way you go, I feel like you're siding with the state. So I don't want to side with the coercive enterprise in, in, in any way here. So... I would say let's go after the root. And the root, no, 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 no. I said in the article what the root was from a, within the, 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 the state parameter, which is to end the regulations. But the root is that uh, we do not have the power. Individuals do not have the power to, well, we do. We have the technology, but we, don't, we haven't put it all together. We do not have the power to basically say no. I don't care about your your monopoly ISPs and okay if 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 now the ISPs are unshackled and they begin their process to throttle down and monitor and do all of the things that people are afraid will happen with net neutrality being removed, uh, we could just say you know what we're going to use the mesh network we're going to do this we're going to what whatever there's all types of opportunities out here to create our own local networks. And it, and it actually, I did a story yesterday where that's starting to happen, some localities. Now, this is, this is local governments that are doing this, but still, it's kind of an indication that there, there are workarounds. So some of these localities are trying to develop their own local networks so that they can avoid uh, the terror that is netpocalypse. We'll, we'll be following this story probably for quite some time as we it, it'd be an interesting case study uh, because what you had here was you had a certain list of regulations that may possibly have prevented another possibly even more horrible list of regulations from fully hurting people. So we'll see how that plays out. Does it play out the way the uh, supporters of net neutrality believe it does? Do human beings find a clever way around it do isps recognize the inherent risk of fully taking advantage of their monopolistic power and thus don't do it these are the things that we're about ready to find out over the course of the next months and possibly a couple years we'll go to the next headline Maryland joins lists of states challenging gun rights of medical marijuana use. I think I've relayed this story before. I have fibromyalgia, and by the definition, it's now your net medical marijuana in Pennsylvania is now legal. I live in Pennsylvania. There is a dispensary uh, a few couple miles away from where I'm at. It's about ready to open up in February. And my wife said, hey, you plan on filing for that or, uh, you know, filing or requesting whatever it is that for that uh, medical marijuana card and I said no 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 interest whatsoever you know why because I know what's coming and it's happened in Pennsylvania the Pennsylvania State Police have uh, issued a statement on their website saying if all the people with medical marijuana need to consult their lawyers about the process that they're going to go through to turn in their guns. And it's really amazing to hear the governor here, uh, Tom Wolf, who's a Democrat, and he's definitely not pro-gun, but yet he finds himself in a position to awkwardly defend gun rights because, you know, he's pro-medical marijuana and he doesn't want that, that stigmatized. So he's in this weird position of defending gun rights and saying, dude, you can't do that, man. That's not right. You can't do that. So in Maryland, former state uh, de delegate Mike Smeagol, who sponsored medical marijuana laws and is a staunch advocate of gun rights, said it was wrong for the government to force people to choose between getting medical help and being able to defend themselves. Well, yes. 
The eastern shore of Republicans said marijuana and guns should be treated like alcohol and guns. Don't use them at the same time. You don't drink when you're using firearms. I don't think that's any different. The Maryland State Police, however, oversee gun ownership in this state, ask prospective gun buyers if they have a medical marijuana card. By law, buyers must allow the state health department to disclose whether they have applied for a card. <laughs> so gun advocates say... They've seen questions about medical marijuana appear in the applic application process only in recent months. State police didn't respond to questions about the policy. So, it looks like they are heading down the path <coughs> of, once again, like Pennsylvania and, and uh, California even, of, well... You're either going to get this medical marijuana, which is going to help with whatever ailment you have, or you're going to be able to hold on to your guns. Can't do both. That would be inappropriate. We'll get to the next headline. And here we go. Chinese. Oh, this is a fun one. Chinese dating app delivers only bots, not women, to single men. So this is from bbc.com. Chinese dating app closed after women revealed to be robots. That is, <laughs> I've, I've seen stories, you know, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not part of the dating action on the Facebooks, but uh, I know a number who are. And, and the common complaint that you have amongst these folks when they join these dating groups is, it's mostly dudes, and half the women are bots. So <laughs> I'm not surprised by this story at all. You know, women, women, they just don't, I don't know. I, I, I don't think that women have to go out and find the men's. I'm talking about, if, if we're talking about people trying to hook up, if you're looking for a serious relationship, then that's difficult whether you're a man or a woman. But but the hookup thing, that's that's not a problem. Women will have no problem finding men who want to hook up. It's it's not a problem at all. I I think that's what's going on here. But let's read the article and see if my suspicion is right. So a number of Chinese uh, of Chinese mobile applications have been shut down after it was revealed women on their platforms were actually automated robots. It's reported. According to the Modern Express newspaper, police have closed down mobile apps associated with 21 companies and arrested more than 600 suspects operating across 13 pro provinces. This isn't just one app. This is multiple apps. After discovering that messages from some women were being automatically generated by computer programs. So, police in southern Southern Guangdong province began investigating in August 17 after suspecting one app of fraudulently charging visitors to visit pornographic videos, which did not exist. Wait, okay, I'm, I'm going to let that float and just pass through because we're running out of time. Further investigation found that technical personnel from at least one company had created fake sexy girl accounts. They solicited gifts and posts and other messages to lure the user into spending money and thus illegally generating profits. So we got another headline here. I might just touch on these real briefly. Oh, I should have put this earlier. American God of War Redux as Trump pushes by American arms. So... Trump is calling on the Pentagon and the diplomats to play a bigger role in arms sales. The Trump administration is nearing completion of a new Buy American plan that calls for the U.S. military attaches and diplomats to help drum up billions of dollars more in businesses overseas for the U.S. weapons industry. So what, so what we need in the world right now is we need the U.S. government to sell more arms to other governments because we know that other governments are going to be very responsible with arms, don't we? And that, that was one sec. Well, it was once against my sarcasm face. So President Donald Trump is expected to announce a whole of government approach that will also ease export rules on U.S. military exports and give greater weight to the economic benefits for American manufacturers in a decision-making process that has long focused heavily on human rights considerations, according to people familiar with the plan. 
And we're just about out of time, so I'm just going to touch on this last headline real quickly. China's social media is enabling an Orwellian state already. So basically, this story is that uh, Alibaba and other Chinese media social giants are using their algorithms to help China determine where the next uh, social unrest threat will come from. And we're out of time. Okay, I went like one second over, but we're out of time. That's the 22nd.